What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Today we are talking camera settings, specifically camera settings for sports photography. I think this is gonna be a good one, let's go. So yes, today we are gonna be talking camera settings. We're gonna do this in a couple of parts. Uh, the first part of the video is gonna to be to do with exposure and the basics of getting that exposure right. And then the second part, maybe there might be a third part, but at least the second part is gonna to be to do with some of the more specific aspects of the settings around focus and some things like that. This is actually a remake of a video I did a while ago. If you wanna go check that one out, you can go find it back in my old videos. But I saw it the other day and I thought, you know what, I could do so much of a better job at that video. And that's why I'm refilming this today. Before we get into the actual subject of settings itself, make sure you go hit that like button. You guys know how much it helps me out on the channel. Total transparency about it. The more likes I get on the video, the more it promotes the video to other people, more people get to see it, more people might have a look at it. And of course, that's really good for the channel. And that's why I always encourage you guys to go press that like button because it helps me out every time. Of course, you should be pressing that like button on each and every video. Why would you not want to do that? If you're new to the channel, please do think about subscribing. Go Go hit that subscribe button that's right down there as well you can hit the like and the subscribe at the same time everyone's a winner so without further ado let's talk camera settings now the first thing we're going to look at is the basics of how we get the exposure right now when you're talking about exposure there are three main things you need to consider number one you want to consider your shutter speed Number two, you want to consider your aperture. And number three, you need to consider your ISO or ISO levels. Each of those three things will make your image either darker or brighter, depending on where you set them. And they work together as a three. Let me show you what I mean. So for the sake of this example, we're gonna create what we call a sweet spot. That's gonna be this circle right in the middle of the page. That's the sweet spot. That's where the perfect exposure of an image sits. That X, that's what we're aiming for. And we have three variables that could potentially pull us outside of this sweet spot. The first one, of course, is shutter speed. The second one, uh, depending on how you want to say it, is either ISO level or ISO level. That's the second variable. And of course, the third one is aperture. And those three things can affect our exposure and ultimately pull us out of that sweet spot. We could increase one or decrease one, the shutter speed, um, the ISO level or of course the aperture as well and that would brighten or darken the image depending on how we're adjusting it but that would pull us out of the sweet spot now of course it could go both ways so as well as for example um decreasing the aperture you could actually increase it um same with the iso or uh, shutter speed as well changing any of them though will pull us outside of that sweet spot unless we get all three just right See by that little diagram there, I designed that myself, you like that, right? That little diagram, you can see how each of the three will affect your exposure and then they work together. So as one pulls you out of that sweet spot, you can potentially up or reduce another level, which will then realign you and pull you back in. So you're right in the middle of that triangle the whole time because that's where you need to be. Now, when we're talking about sports, you need to have your shutter speed quite high. The reason for that is if something moves in your image, you want to freeze that action. And sports is a really fast moving subject, so you need to freeze the action. That's why we're always going to set our shutter speed at quite a high level. Realistically, you're probably going to be want to be aiming for one thousandth of a second. That's kind of the sweet spot for sports. Sometimes you might want to go faster, like 1250th. Sometimes you can get away with a little slower, around 1 800th. Let me show you a little bit more around what I mean about shutter speed. Okay, so here we have the back of the 1DX. Now, if I just go into the quick menu, that's going to be the easiest place um, to show you the three settings that we are talking about. Now, for this, we're shooting in manual modes, like we talked about at the beginning, um, which is the M over here. Now, we're not going to touch too much on that today, because really, this is all about shutter speed, aperture, and ISO levels. So first of all, the shutter speed. Now, we always are going to want to keep a fast shutter speed like we've already talked about. And specifically, I will be aiming for a shutter speed of uh, one thousandth of a second 
or more. So in an ideal world, maybe even 1250, but a thousandth of a second, that's what we're going to be talking about. Because when we take a photo at one thousandth of a second, it freezes everything within the image. So just to demonstrate that now, um, I'm just going to roll a ball right here across the counter and you'll see what happens if we take a photo of it. So I'm literally going to roll this ball across the counter and take some photos, all three taken at one thousandth of a second, and you can see they've absolutely frozen that basketball. It almost looks like it's sitting still on the counter. So let's make an adjustment. We're going to turn this down to one three twentieth of a second. Now we're going to roll this basketball along the counter and take these three photos once more. This time you can see a bit of blur and that's because the basketball has moved a little bit during the time that the shutter was open. It hasn't frozen the basketball completely. We could go even further. So let's turn this right the way down to one sixtieth of a second. We're going to roll this basketball once more and take the same three photos. This time you can see loads of movement. The photos actually almost look like they're out of focus. They're not, it's just that it hasn't frozen the basketball and there's been so much movement whilst the shutter was open. So once you get that shutter speed dialed in right, you've got it fast enough so it's freezing that action, it's freezing that basketball like we just showed in the pictures there. Now, of course, that that is kind of set. Now, you could take a photo and realise, oh, my exposure is a little bit too dark. So, of course, we could slow down that shutter speed. That then lets more light into the picture and it brightens the image. But, of course, we know now with sports we don't want to do that because we need it fast enough to freeze the action, which means we can't look at the shutter speed anymore. We have to accept that's where we need it to be. It's at one thousandth of a second, let's say, for this. So we know, going back to our triangle, we can look at one of the other two factors to try to increase the brightness of the image. The first one we were going to look at is aperture. Now those of you guys who are new to photography, you'll hear aperture referred to in, in all different ways. You might hear it referred to as, as f-stop um, or how fast the, the lens is that you're using. Generally speaking, um, the, the wider the aperture, the more light you are letting into your lens. So very simple terms, a, a big aperture, and, and by that we mean a lower number, the more light you're letting into your lens. So inside your lens you have um, aperture blades which will open or will close and will let more or less light into your photo. Some lenses have a really, really fast aperture, like an f1.8 lens, and that lets loads of light into the image. Some don't, some will only come down about as far as f4, and that lets a little bit less light into the lens. Depending on where you set that, the bigger the aperture, so the lower the number, the more light coming into your lens. The higher the number, so the lower the aperture, um, the less light comes into your lens. At the same time, the lower you have that number, the lower that F number is, the shorter depth of field you have, and the bigger, the wider depth of field. That's why you'll quite often hear people shooting sort of portraits or sports, so like F2.8, whereas you might get landscape photographers shooting at something like f9 f11 because they need more in focus in that landscape image now for sports the best place i always say to start is to get that aperture as low as you can so that means if you have an f4 lens set it to f4 if you've got an f2.8 lens set it to 2.8 you want to set it as low as you can the main reason why we're going to do that is because it lets as much light into the camera as possible now we already know our shutter speed is fast which means we're not letting much light in through that shutter speed so by having the aperture as low as we can you let more light into the image and that helps us along the way to getting the correct exposure we know how those two things work together if we look back at that diagram i did earlier and so where the shutter speed is pulling that image darker by having a lower a lower aperture you're setting that that light back up again and you're pushing the brightness of that image up to try to get the exposure just right the other thing it does for you is it gives you a more shallow depth of field. And for a sports image, that just generally looks better. It isolates the subject. I'm going to show you what I mean. We're going to get that basketball back out again. So let me show you what I mean about using that aperture to create that nice depth of field. OK, so the first thing we need to do is get this back to one thousandth of a second because that's where we know we want it. Now, I'm going to shoot this photo at f2.8 because my lens is an f2.8 lens. So it's as fast as it can go. And you'll see with this photo that I've taken here that the basketball is really isolated. The background is slightly blurred. And that's because I've given myself that really shallow depth of field to try to isolate the image.
Now, if we make an adjustment, let's go all the way to F11, and then we're gonna say, take the same photo again. You'll see this time, everything's in focus. The wall, the counter, the basketball, it's all in focus. Now, the photo is nice, but it doesn't isolate the subject so much, in this case, the basketball, because we don't have that kind of blur of the background. And that's why I would always recommend shooting as wide open, as lower aperture number as you possibly can, depending on the lens that you're using. Okay, so once you've got that aperture set right, you're probably going to have your shutter speed where you want it, around a thousandth of a second. Your aperture might be where you want it, around f2.8, f4, potentially a lot of people might be using. Or even more, you might have a lens where you can only go to f5.6, and that's okay. You set it to wherever you can. Then, of course, we need to look at the third part of our triangle, which is the ISO or ISO levels. The higher that number, that is to do with the sensitivity of the sensor in your camera. So the more you up that ISO level, the more sensitive and the more light that sensor is going to draw into your camera. So you might automatically think, well, in that case, why don't I just set it really high? It draws loads of light in and I can get the perfect exposure. The problem is with doing that is that the higher you set that level, yes, you get more light into your sensor, but also the more grey. Um, and the more kind of fuzzy some of your image can look is commonly referred to as noise so if you guys hear the phrase noise that's what we're talking about we're talking about when we have a higher ISO level you get more noise more graininess more fuzziness in the image so you don't want to set that ISO too high and in fact you want to set it as low as you possibly can so the way we do that, the way we set it as low as we possibly can, we can do the other two first. We set that shutter speed to where we want it to be, thousandth of a second. We're going to set, set the aperture to where we want it to be, as wide open as we can. So let's say f4, for example. And then we set the ISO level. Let's see what happens if we put it at 200. We put it at 200 and we take a photo. It might be too dark, in which case, okay, let's up it slightly. Let's set it to 400, take another photo. And you see where you're at. You might need to set that, that ISO level to 400 on a bright day, um, probably even 100 on a bright sunny day, slightly darker you might be at 800, you know 1600, you've got to set that where you need it to be. Of course some cameras can go to much higher ISO levels without that noise level really affecting it, something like a 1DX for example you can shoot right up to like ISO 10,000 and your noise level is still very manageable. With some cameras you can't do that and of course that does cause you some restrictions and that's when you need to start reducing that shutter speed for example because we know that's also another way where we can increase the brightness of the image without getting that ISO level too high. Okay, so there we go. That's the ISO levels. So we've covered all three. We've talked about shutter speed, we've talked about aperture, and we've talked about ISO levels. Now, of course, the key things when it comes to sports, as we talked about earlier, you want the shutter speed higher, at least one thousandth of a second. You want your aperture as low as you can get it. If you've got an f2.8 lens, great, set it at 2.8. If you've got an f4 lens, f4, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then you need to set your ISO as low as you can, but high enough that the exposure is correct on the image based on where you've set your other two. So let's just have a quick look at what I mean about those settings in very simple terms, right? If you increase your aperture, so by that in simple terms, I mean the number. So if we increase our aperture from like F4 up to F9 or F11, our image is going to get darker. If we increase the shutter speed, so the faster the shutter speed, our image is going to get darker. And the lower the ISO level, our image is going to get darker. So you might go from an image, something like this, to maybe something like this, and all I've done there is increase the aperture. We've gone on my camera here from f4 up to f8, and this is what happens when we go to f11, so hopefully you guys can still see me. Let me show you with the shutter speed. So we're back to normal, we're back to where we were, but if we increase that shutter speed and we crank that right up, it's going to make the image darker again. There we go, faster shutter speed, darker image. So we need to bump up the ISO level, so let's bump up the ISO level because it's going to make our image brighter again. And just like that, we're brighter again because we've increased the ISO level. You can also use that further and we can make the image brighter and go way too far like this. So it's, it's too bright. And the more you turn it up, the brighter it's going to get until you go way too far and the image looks like this, which of course is no good. So we need to make, we need to make it darker, which we could do by increasing the shutter speed or by reducing the ISO level, which is what we're going to do because we don't need it this bright.
It really is as simple as that. What I've just described there is pretty much manual photography. That's how you shoot manual. Um, it, sometimes I think people overcomplicate it. If you haven't used manual before, go out there, try some of the, the theories I just said, take a few photos. If it's too dark, change one of those three things to make it brighter. If it's too bright, change one of those things to make it darker. It's not that difficult. And actually with a little bit of practice, you can get the hang of it pretty quickly. Okay, so that is pretty much it for part one of camera settings for sports photography. Fairly basic today, but that's the whole idea. In the next episode of this, we're going to talk a bit more about some of the other bits. I'm going to talk about focus points. I'm going to talk about focus modes. I'm going to talk about back button focus and a few other little bits that we use to help your settings for sports photography. I hope you guys enjoyed part one of this video. If you did, make sure you go hit that like button, like I said earlier. And I'm going to see you guys real soon in part two of this series. Thank you very much.